Welcome once again, it's uh, Tiger Shark from the ED Forums, and today I'm going to get a little bit more uh, practical, not just theoretical. And uh, we've got a video of some, some hardware today. And um, this is not really part of the series, this is just like a, a side video, really, because I'm going to take some time to talk to you all about switches. Now, switches you'd think are fairly standard things, they all look the same, or or they all act the same, but in fact there are some subtle differences between them that I think you should know when you're building an A10 panel. First of all, let's talk about the bottom of switches. Some of them have screw connections like this one here, and other ones have solder connections like this one here. If you do not want to be doing any soldering when you make your panel, then you need one of these because the Groovy Game Gear interface will have a screw into, uh, will have screw terminals where you can screw wires into and you can screw the other ones to this and you don't need to to uh, to do any soldering which is quite handy for some people if you're not uh, not familiar with a soldering iron. Next thing you should know, I talked a little bit about double throw, single throw, or double throw, double pull. Um, basically, let me explain the difference. So I've set up a, a switch here with a LED, just to show you with an LED, to show you what it, what it means. A, a single throw switch, when you throw the switch, it makes a connection and something goes on. When you switch it off, there's no longer any connection. So it's a simple on-off switch, single throw. It means throw it once, it's on, voila. And the second I'm going to show you a, uh, a double throw switch and the difference between the two. And uh, we might also talk about poles while we're here. Poles are simply a word for these uh, connections on the bottom. If you have a double pole switch, it means that you have two sets of these. A single pole would just have these three connections. A double pole has six connections, and uh, or four connections if this was just a single throw switch, but this is a double throw switch. And uh, a double, what does a double pole give you? It means that while you're having this actually one, one set of the poles doing the switching for you, you could potentially use these poles for something else, like for example, to attach a LED to, so that as you threw the switch, a LED would turn on, or as you threw the switch the other way, a LED would turn off. Uh, this would be useful if on your panel, if I wanted to put a LED here to show whether the switch was on or off, I could use this second pole. This is not necessary for building an A10 panel such as this which has no lights. You could get away with a single pole switch. Um, it's just a matter of uh, whether you want it to be a single throw or a double throw. Uh, in switch terminology they often call double throw DT switches and single pole SP so an ST, a DT SP would be a double throw, throw single pole switch. Uh, a SP SP would be a oh, STSP would be a single throw, single pole switch. Um, in a second, I'll show you a difference between uh, double throw and single pole. But just just to recap again, single throw. When you throw the switch, it turns on. When you turn it off, there's no connection anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the difference. This is actually a double throw switch here, and you know it's a double throw switch because you have a center position, which uh, is the ground and then you have two contacts on each side of the switch. If it was a single pole you would only see two positions, one for on, so when the switch is there and this orientation is on and when you flip the switch this way it would be off. Okay, But a double throw switch is going to have three contacts at least. And what does it, what's the difference, right? I showed you before a single pole switch, when, you flew, when I flick the switch here, the red light turned on and off. But in fact, a double throw means that when you switch up, you make one connection, and when you switch down, you make another connection. This means that if you connect a toggle switch to your um, gamepad uh, or your groovy game gear interface, you're going to get one button up and one button down. Now, when you're making a, uh, a panel for A10, you could get away with a single throw switch because A10 could, uh, could easily recognize the fact that you're throwing a switch up and it's on and when you throw it down it's off. But I chose double throw switches for my panel 
simply because you never know when I might want to use this panel for another sim which perhaps does support a particular function up and a particular function down. Um, but look, the, the important difference to remember is that a single throw switch is simply on off. A double throw switch is on when it's up, on when it's down. It's never off. It's either sending one signal or another signal. Um, I hope that's clear. Uh, we could probably talk about it a little bit more uh, in the YouTube channel or on the forums if you wish. But uh, do a bit of research on this. Um, like I said, for a strictly A10 only panel, a single throw switch would be okay. I chose double throw because you never know when I might want to refurbish this panel for some other game or some other sim. Um, so uh, there you go. Double throws are just a little bit extra than a single throw. So I mean, depending on whether you really want to be economical or if you can afford the a little bit extra, I'd probably recommend going double throws um, until uh, until you know just just to factor in that you might want to build this panel for, for some other game at some point in time. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. But just so you know, that you can see the difference between double throw and single throw. Um, yeah. Uh, if I just continue a little bit, I know this is not the best video. You also have momentary. This is a momentary switch. This is a momentary on, off, momentary. It means that in, when it's in the center position, it's off. Once you move it and hold it down, you make a contact. And as soon as you let it go, it stops again. So this sort of jumps back to the middle all the time. It's spring-loaded. Um, so this is a one type of switch. It's called momentary on switch. Not, I mean, very useful because it just sends a quick pulse rather than stays on the whole time. You can see here that these continuously send a signal. If I use this switch, the red light would only be on as long as I held this up. Um, uh, not so useful though for sims because it's not all that realistic because in, in the air cockpit planes the switch is either up or down. You also have uh, push button switches. These are very easy to implement. These are also, you simply just, uh, as you press down it makes a connection and the light goes on. And I can show you very quickly how that works. I'm just using uh, alligator clips here. So uh, I'm going to put something on the middle pole, something on the other pole, here, and as I press the button, nothing happens. Awesome. Maybe it's this one here. Yeah, it's this one here. So as I press the button, you can see that, uh, so this is, these are what push button switches, and they differ from toggle switches because they simply uh, only have connection while you hold the button down, where a toggle switch will continuously hold the button down like this. We'll, we'll it's almost as if you're holding the button down when you use a toggle switch. So there are also toggle switches that have LEDs built into them, so you need to make sure that you use a, you use, let me just get rid of this, you use a resistor. You need to use a resistor in order to run the LED, and as you flick the switch, of course, the LED goes on. As you flick the, flick the switch down, the LED goes off. Pretty cool. I mean, not realistic in terms of A10, but... You know, maybe you can use your own imagination for making these panels as well. Maybe you prefer to have something like this. Um, another cool thing is that you can get, uh, if I just go to my prototype panel here, you can get these nice military sort of switches that flick up, you flick the switch, and then when you flick these things down, the switch goes back to the down position. They're quite, uh, quite interesting. Might be good for a master arm switch or something like that. Again, you can use your imagination. There's not one of these in A10. Um, well, not for the switches that I'm modeling anyway. Um, but still, you know, it might be a bit of fun. It's sort of up to you. You can use your own creativity there. So, um, that's a little bit about switches. Not all switches are equal. Uh, remember that the most important differences are this double throw versus single throw. And uh, you don't need to worry too much about single pole versus double pole. I would just probably go with a single pole switch for, uh, for all your A10 purposes. But I would recommend doing a double throw, single pole switch. Um, this is a double throw, double pole, but go through a, go for a double throw, single throw switch, and you'll be okay. Uh, one other thing to mention is three position switches. This is actually a three position switch. It's a double throw, but three positions. It means that when you throw it down like this, you make a connection. In the middle, it's off, and when you flick up, it's making another connection. There are three position switches in the DCS ten, uh, DCS A ten cockpit, so. Uh, you might need to buy a couple of these. 
important thing is to flick the switches in the cockpit, work out which ones that uh, you'll need to buy, and um, yeah, you're, you're good. If anyone has any questions, please uh, either post in the ED forums or post in the YouTube channel, and I'm more than happy to answer them.